This is a video on how to do a delivery on a 2017 Toyota Prius 4. As with every delivery, the first thing you want to do is connect the customer's phone. So first you would select the phone option right here and then click yes. And then from the customer's phone, you'll go to settings, Bluetooth, turn on the Bluetooth, and wait for the device to pop up on the phone. Select the device. Bluetooth pairing was successful. Now in a few seconds it will ask for messages to come through. Once that pops up, click the blue circle next to connected, turn on show notifications. That allows the text messages to come through to the car. Now while this is updating, I usually go over the radio first. So if you click source, you have AM, FM, and three free months of satellite XM. After the three months, it will stop working unless if you'd like to set up a subscription with Sirius XM, in which case you would call Sirius and set up a subscription depending on what plan you would like varies on how much it will cost. You also have USB and auxiliary ports located down here. You also have Bluetooth audio. Now, with this vehicle, this has Toyota Entune on it, which means that you also have these extra apps that you can access if you have Entune. My phone currently does have Entune, but if your customer does not have Entune, you would go to the App Store, click Search, click the top search bar, and type in E-N-T-U-N-E. -E. And then you want to make sure it's Toyota Entune, not Toyota Entune 3.0. That is only for the 2018 Camrys as of right now. So as you can see, I have already downloaded. So you would click open. So this is what pops up whenever you first download it. Usually with every customer that we have, we go ahead and set up an Entune account before they get out of finance. So that way, all they have to do is enter in a pass, um, their email address. And usually we set the password for the make, which is Toyota, and then the year for this model it would be a 17 so it would be Toyota 17 all lowercase since I already have an account I have my own password so I'll go ahead and type that in now that it's on this screen whenever it's all gray like this and it says disconnect at the bottom that means that it is connected to the vehicle but whenever you click disconnect and OK, this is what the app looks like when you're not connected to the vehicle. Now, there are particular cases whenever customers would like to go ahead and hook up their Pandora, iHeartRadio, or Slacker. In order to do that, you would click the settings button on the bottom right. With Androids, there will be three dots at the top right right here. You would click the three dots and then it'll say options. And then after you click options, it will take you to this same screen. You'll click the second option, account linking. And as you can see, I already have all of mine linked up, but if you click on it, I'll just unlink it and relink it in just a few seconds. You would just type in the email and password for your account. And then after you do that, it will pull up on the car over here. I repaired my Pandora account, so now that I've gone back to this screen, all you do is click connect to vehicle, and it'll go back to the gray screen, meaning that it is connected with the vehicle. Now if I go back to audio and click over to Pandora, after you select Pandora, this pops up. This is just letting you know that it will use your data plan in order to use the Intune apps on the vehicle. So all you do is just click OK. And as you can see, all of my stations have downloaded, so you can select whichever station you would like, and it'll play your personal stations instead of you having to pull up Pandora on your phone and tether it through the USB or auxiliary port. Now if you go back to Source, and then select FM, at the bottom of the screen you have Station List. You can scroll through, and it'll list out every station that 
plays in that specific genre. You also have this pause button, which is a little different from all the other vehicles. Um, you can press pause and it'll save up to 20 minutes in the cache. And you can fast forward, rewind, if you select live, it will play where it's playing real time right now. That feature automatically initiates whenever you get a phone call and then whenever you're done with your phone call, it will play back to where it was playing originally before the phone call. You also have sound. You can adjust the sound however you like. After you're done going over the audio screen, select apps. This is a pop-up letting you know that you need a Bluetooth connection in order for the applications on Intune to work. Usually what I do during the delivery is press don't tell me again and OK. For right now, because this vehicle is not sold, we'll just click OK. The first thing you would go over is navigation. So on this navigation screen, as you can see, it's only pointing north right now. So if you click this button on the top left of the screen, it will center the map so that way it will move with the vehicle as it's turning, which is what most people prefer. So after you do that, you can click the bottom destination button. On this screen, in order to put an address in, I always like to give an example. So we click address and then select state, select the city, And as you can see, it predicts what you're typing and lists out all the options that you have. Now you would only enter the street name without the numbers first. So we'll just type in Eastern Boulevard. And then the house number. As you can see, this particular address has multiple different addresses. So you would just select which one you're trying to get to. Now that you're on this screen, I always tell people about this button right here. If you click mark, it saves the address in your address book and you have a, up to 100 different addresses that you can save in the address book. But if you would like to go ahead and start the route, you would just click go. On the bottom, if you click destination and then address book, you can see that the address saved. Now, in order to delete the address, you would click this options button right here, delete. You would select the address you want to delete and then click delete and then yes. Now that address is no longer saved. You also have point of interest. If you click name or phone number, you can look up a business name or phone number and it'll look up the location according to the name or phone number. If you click category, you can select near here and it looks up all these destinations nearby. So if you select one, say they are in the mood for barbecue, it will list out all of the restaurants nearby that have that option. Now, you also have previous destinations, so you can see destinations that you've already entered in in the past, which you can also delete which ones you want to delete in order to clear it out of the previous destination. Now, with the Entune app, you have this web search option here. If you click destination search, you can type in an address right here that might not be saved on this map card in order to get to that address still because it will look up the longitude and latitude of the location on your data and then it will put the longitude and latitude into this map card so that way you can get to that address even though it's not listed on the map card. For example, there was a woman that tried to get to Ovapa, West Virginia. If you select West Virginia and start typing in Ovapa, it won't let you type it in because it's not saved in this map card. So with that being said, you can type in Ovapa, West Virginia under destination search and it'll look up the location even though it's not saved on this map card. Now what I also like to do is go ahead and set the home address for our customer. So if you click go home, it'll ask you to set one now. You would type 
address and then select the address that you want to save as the home address. Sometimes there are customers that do not like their home address saved because they're fearful that a robber would rob their car and go to their house. I always tell the customer that if someone were to rob your car, I would not think they would want to actually show up at your house. So there might be, that might be a way to deter them from worrying about it. And then you would click OK and now it's saved. So now every time we click go home, we'll click go directly and I'll go ahead and put in that address. At the bottom you have these one through five spots. You can set different addresses just like that go home button. So if you select it, it will ask you the same thing that the go home button asked you and you would just type in the address that you would like to save, whether it be work or family members, etc, etc. Now if you click over you have emergency, which you can look up emergency, police stations, hospitals, dealerships, and fire stations. So that way, in case of an emergency, you can get to it quickly. You also have intersection and freeway. It'll look up intersections and freeways nearby. You also have maps, so you can see where you're currently at. And you also have coordinates, so you can type in the longitude and latitude of a destination if that's all you knew about the location. Now we already went over audio, so now we can select phone, which is also located here. It has all your contacts in here, all your call history in here, and if you click the little stars next to anyone's names, you can save it to your favorites list. You have your dial pad. This top right envelope is for text messages, so whenever you get one, there will be a pop-up on the screen that'll say read or ignore. If you click read, it reads it out to you through the speakers. If you click ignore, it saves on this list right here. You also have Eco down here. That gives you your energy monitor so you can see the rotation of energy throughout the vehicle being that it is a Prius. Then you also have trip information. So you can see what kind of gas mileage you're getting over 15 minutes. You also have past record. That gives you an average and best record of your miles per gallon. Under traffic, Keep in mind with the traffic and weather buttons, they run off the HD radio signal if the phone is not Bluetooth connected with the Intune app on it. If you do have the phone connected with the Intune app downloaded, then it will work like it is right now, but if you don't have it connected, it will say HD signal not available. Um, particularly in Montgomery, Alabama, because Montgomery, Alabama does not have a strong HD signal here. So with that being said, since we do have our phone connected and in tune downloaded, if you click traffic event list, traffic event list lists out all the roads that have traffic nearby and what kind of traffic it is. So you can scroll through and you can see the different kinds of traffic um, listed. And then if you go back, you also have predictive traffic map. That shows you a map just like the navigation, showing you how the traffic's moving. And if you click this arrow, it'll predict 15 minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, and 45 minutes from now on how the traffic will look in the future. You also have the weather button located here. If you click current weather, it gives you temperatures and percentages. You also have a three day option and a six to 12 hour option. If you go back, you also have a weather map. That gives you a whole radar where you're at and you can zoom out and see the entire state if you would like to. Now if you go over, you have maintenance here. With every vehicle sold, I like to go ahead and set the engine oil and rotation servicing. So if you click engine oil, you would click edit and then type in 10,000 miles. And then if you click rotation, you would type in 5,000 miles. So that way there will be a reminder that will pull up every time the vehicle gets close to the set mileage. Now from here, all these apps down here run off that Intune app that we just downloaded. So open table, you can set reservations at restaurants nearby. Pandora, iHeartRadio, and Slacker are all for music. 
destination search and save destinations is from the uh, navigation that we went over earlier. MovieTickets.com looks up nearby theaters, showings, show times. Facebook places, you can check in at a location and tag the people that you're there with. Yelp is for reviews on anywhere you want to go. Sports, you can look up upcoming games, past scores, current standings on pretty much anything you want. Stocks, you can add different stocks you're interested in to see them change over time. Fuel Guide is the best one in my opinion. It looks up nearby gas stations, prices, and how far away they are. And if you select price, it will list it from lowest price to highest price so that way you can find the cheapest gas nearby. Now lastly, you have this home button located here. That gives you a three panel, so you have your radio, your navigation, and you can click and hold these four spots and set different speed dials from your contacts. So you would select the person that you call most often, and then you would select their phone number, and now he is listed right there, so all I have to do is click on his name, and it'll immediately start calling him instead of having to look up the customer or the um, person through your contacts, selecting them and then calling. Down here in this section you have your automatic climate control. With automatic climate control whenever you select it, the fan goes up because it's trying hard to get to this temperature right here. If you push this up, the fan goes down because it's not trying as hard to get to that temperature. Now you also have eco cool and heat. If you click Eco, it saves you on gas mileage, which is really good. Down here you have your front and rear defrost. The rear defrost also controls your heated side mirrors. Over here you have this button right here that center, centers the air to blow in the front and not blow in the back, so that way you get more air in the front for the front passengers. This right here changes the direction of the air, so just depending on which way you would like to like it to blow. Down here, this is the thing that's slightly different about Priuses. Um, you have the gear shift knob. Now in order to put it in reverse, you would push this over and up into reverse. And as you can see, this has a backup camera and it also beeps letting you know that you're backing up. And if you push it over, it goes into neutral. And then if you push it over and down, it goes into drive. Now this also has this brake down here. If you just push this down, it's kind of like a uh, extra brake pedal, except it's hand accessible. So instead of pressing, pressing the brake pedal with your foot, you can press down on this and it'll brake the vehicle as well. Now in order to park the vehicle, you would click this button right here that says P and now the vehicle is in park. You also have drive mode over here. If you select that, it goes through eco mode to normal mode to power mode, and then back to eco mode. Eco mode saves you on gas mileage because it makes the transmission shift slowly, which is good. Normal mode is what I suggest using on the interstate. Power mode gives you more acceleration, so if you were in a hurry, power mode would be a good option for you. You also have EV mode. Whenever you select EV mode, there will be a pop-up letting you know EV mode is not available because of the low battery we currently have. Keep in mind with Priuses, every time you press the brake pedal, it does charge the battery, so there is no need to plug in on a Prius 4. With that being said, the EV mode automatically kicks in by itself, so you really don't have to worry about pressing the EV mode to turn on the battery-operated vehicle. Down here, you have a Qi charging pad. In order to turn it on, you click this power button right here, and then the green light comes on. If you have a Qi wireless charging phone, you would select, set it down right here, and it will wirelessly charge. Over here you have your USB auxiliary port and 12 volt. Currently I am charging my phone, which I always tell people if you use a 12 volt, it will charge faster than this USB port, so keep that in mind. Then down here you have your heated seats, 
if you click high, it will heat it high. If you click low, it won't heat it as much. You also have one on the passenger side. Now, if you open the glove box, you have your owner's manual. You also have a car charger already in here. Some of the vehicles have this feature in here. Basically, you have a 12 volt with two USB ports, so you can charge two devices at one time. You have two cables for iPhones, one's longer than the other, and you have one cable that's compatible with Samsung's and HTC's, etc., etc. Up here, you have three buttons that look like houses. These are the home link buttons. So basically, you can set garage door openers or gate openers for these buttons if you'd like to. All the customer has to do is while they're in front of the garage or the gate, they would click and hold the remote that they currently possess and then click and hold this button right here until that red light turns green, letting you know that it is synced up to the garage or the gate. Keep in mind there are some garages that are older that you may need to click on the button on the head unit in the garage and then you have about one minute to get back into the car and click and hold this button in order for it to sync up. On the right side of the steering wheel you have these buttons right here. These are for the dash located at the top. Now if you click down on the iTab it gives you different information about the vehicle and then if you click right that is a compass right again that's your radio right again that's your climate control settings right again this is your lane departure system now you do have a lane departure button located on the steering wheel it's this middle button right here whenever you select it that green light pops up on the dash letting you know that it is on after 32 miles an hour it will detect the lines in the road so if you start getting too close to a line it will adjust your steering wheel and get you back in the middle of the lane and now if you click right again this is notifications like if you need maintenance done and then right again you also have all your settings here now with the lane departure system you can turn on and off the steer assist mode under here you can change the sensitivity of the lane departure system you also can turn on and off your pre-collision system with the pre-collision system if you get too close to a moving object or a car or a person because it does have pedestrian detection it will stop the car and then you also have the sensitivity that you can change of the pre-collision system you also have park assist which you can see is um, on with the right side of the dash you can see the P that is lit up green letting you know that it is on. With Park Assist, whenever you're parking, it will beep and let you know whenever you get too close to another object. And then if you click down again, you have your Intelligent Clearance Sonar on. Basically, with the Intelligence Clearance Sonar, or ICS, um, whenever you are backing up, it can sense if there is a car behind you, it will stop the car while you're backing up down there you also have your blind spot monitoring um, now you can see that BSM is lit up green next to the lane departure right there you have little cars on the side view mirrors that will light up orange whenever you have someone in your blind spot letting you know not to get over if you click down again you have your sway warning status that you can see is on with the sway warning, it lets you know that you've been driving for too long and it recommends that you pull over and rest and then get back in the car and start your drive again. With the sway warning, you can see the sensitivity that you can change. You also have um, an option to change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. You can change the clock here. You can also press um, this to set the minutes to zero and you have meter customizations and vehicle customizations on here now this vehicle also does have dynamic radar cruise control so in order to turn on the cruise control you click this button on the end of the lever and then you will see a green light pop up on the dash once you get up to the speed you'd like to set it for you just bump it down and it'll set for the speed you can pull it and it'll cancel the speed or you can click up and it'll resume the speed that you were going. Now it says radar ready on the dash. Whenever you select 
the button on the right side of the lane departure button on the steering wheel. You can change how far in front of you that that radar kicks in. So say you have your cruise control set for 70 and then someone cuts in front of you going 60. It will slow down to 60 until you get around them or they get out of your way and it will go back up to 70 so that way you don't have to turn off your cruise control in order to um, continue driving. Behind here you have your windshield wipers. This vehicle has automatic windshield wipers so if you press it down the automatic um, feature is enabled. You can change the um, speed for the automatic windshield wipers. Basically, if it senses that there is wetness on the windshield, it will automatically cut the windshield wipers on. And then if you pull this, it'll miss the front windshield. If you push it out, it miss the back windshield. If you twist this end, it does the back windshield wipers. This is your traction control button, and you also have automatic bright dimmer here. Whenever you click that, that green light comes on, letting you know that it is on. Whenever you have your headlights on and you have your brights on, it will say auto on the dash. With the automatic bright dimmer, it will um, sense if there's a car coming towards you, and it'll cut the brights off, and after that get car gets past you, it will cut them back on. Down here, you have your gas door release button, and you also have your hood pop button here. This is your emergency brake. To cut it on, you just press it in, and then to turn it off, you just press it in again and release. In order to start the self-parking system, first you must press this button located here. Then as you can see, there will be instructions on how to do the self-parking. So this is telling me to go forward, so I'll put it in drive and go forward slightly until it says stop the vehicle. Then it says to shift in reverse and it starts to back up. And as I back up, the steering wheel turns itself. Make sure to keep checking your surroundings. says stop the vehicle and put it in drive. As you can see it turns the wheel and the park assist is complete. With each vehicle that we currently have on our lot, they come with Toyo Care and Toyo Guard. That means you get four years, 45,000 miles free servicing on your vehicle. Every 5,000 miles, you'll want the tires rotated. Every 10,000 miles, you'll want the oil change. With that being said, we also go ahead and set the customer's first service for five months from the day that they purchase the vehicle. They can choose to change the day and time during the delivery if they would like to, or they will get a phone call from our customer service at about a week before the appointment that we set for them, asking them if it's still a good day or time for them. If they don't like the day or time, they can reschedule it at the time of the phone call, or especially if they haven't hit 5,000 miles yet. The reason why we do these deliveries is to ensure that the customer is completely satisfied before they leave our lot. Now, they will get a survey within a week of their purchase, and it will ask them on a scale of unacceptable to truly exceptional how their experience was here. We want every single customer to put truly exceptional on every single option on that survey. Make sure to emphasize truly exceptional to the, to the customer when explaining the survey.